Isabel? Yes. Okay, we, we're ready to go. You can now call the meeting to order. So I hereby call the special board meeting to order. Do we need to approve the agenda? I meant to ask that I apologize, Ben. No, you don't need to approve the agenda. There are no changes to the posted agenda. Great. And so the, then we have public comment as the first part of the meeting. So do we have any public comment? Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to offer a comment to the board? There is none, Isabel. Would you want a roll call? Do we need to do a roll call? We do. OK. So can we do a roll call, Denise? Yes. Great. Can I read off your name, please say um, present. Randy Dorn. Oh, hold it. I, do they need to be all unmuted? Yes, please. OK. Muted. Parker, are you going to unmute everyone? Hello? I think we're unmuted now. I see my name on there, Connie Fletcher, I'm here. Hi, Connie. I see you guys, and Kevin, I hear you. I don't hear the team anymore. I don't hear Denise and Parker, so I'm not sure what's happening. Can you hear me? This is Peter. can hear you, Peter. Yeah, this is Bob. Can this is me? Mona. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear Mona, and I can hear Bob. We know MJ's there. We heard her. I'm here. This is part of the sound check. Can the can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Did you hear Holly? Holly Coon? Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, just barely, but yes, we can hear you. Well, on that, can you hear me better now? I heard Mona. So I have um, Randy Dorn, Connie Fletcher, Bob Hughes, Kevin Laverty, MJ Bolt, Mona Bailey, Isabel Munoz Colon, Peter Mayer, and Holly Coon all online for participation. And we have a quorum of nine members. All right, so now do we, will you mute everyone? I am going to mute everyone now. Please note that after you've been called on by the chair, uh, it will take one moment for you to be unmuted. Thank you. have now been muted. 
Great, and so now we are going to have the presentation by Linda and Michael Middleton. I'll just very, this is Linda, uh, Linda Drake, and I will um, very briefly introduce this topic before Michael Middleton gives his presentation. Setting performance standards on statewide assessments is one of the fundamental duties of the state board articulated in the board's powers and duties statute. The purpose of the meeting today is for the board to consider approval of performance standards on the high school science assessment for students with significant cognitive challenges. The assessment is called the Washington Access to, to Instruction and Measurement, or WA-AIM. Last year at the August 2015 special meeting, the board approved threshold scores for the WA-AIM assessment in English Language Arts and Math in grades 3 through 8 and high school, and approved the WA-AIM exit exam scores in ELA and Math. In addition, the board approved the WA-AIM science threshold scores for grades 5 and 8. The high school science assessment was not administered last year since the accountability testing had been completed the previous school year. The high school science WA-AIM assessment was administered this year, uh, so OSPI has conducted a score setting process for the high school science similar to the process that was conducted last year for the other threshold scores. To uh, recommend an exit exam score, OSPI calculated a score using an equal impact approach that is identifying a score that targets the same percentage of students meeting the exit exam score as met the previous graduation standard over an average of the most recent three years that the previous exam was administered. So to summarize, the board today will be considering the approval of three threshold scores that identify the four achievement levels. The threshold for level two, three, and four. And since the high school YN can be used by students to earn a certificate of individual achievement, the board will also be considering approval of an ex exit exam score. So with that, I'll turn it over to Michael Middleton, Director of Select Assessments with the Office of the Superintendent of Public Instruction. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, Superintendent Dorn, board members and board staff. Uh, Linda did a great job of recapping the primary purpose of this special meeting. And I don't believe I have to do a whole lot more background. Uh, I also believe members were provided these slides uh, that are part of the presentation. Uh, without the numerical values uh, early last week uh, to get a reorientation to the WA-AIM program and the purposes for the test. Um, just once, a couple points uh, to reiterate. Uh, the WA-AIM assessment is a complement primarily to our general assessments in ELA, math, and science. And as Linda referenced, uh, it is also used specifically for the student population uh, in high school uh, for the graduation requirement. Uh, Linda recounted uh, very accurately uh, that in the previous spring administration, we uh, did not administer the high school science assessment to students as the cohort involved had already taken their accountability assessment the previous school year. Again, just a quick visual representation. Uh, the population of students we're addressing and talking about specifically is that 1% slice near 12 o'clock of the pie chart. And we are focused primarily on the high school cut scores uh, for WA-AIM science. The standard, standard setting evolution that Linda referenced uh, occurred last week um, on the 24th and 25th of May. We had a panel of 10 educators and regular classroom teachers uh, participate in the process. Uh, additional aspects of the participants, five of the 10 members who participated in the standard setting panel were returnees from the previous year's standard setting evolution. Three of those five returnees participated in the grade five, eight science conversations when cut scores were set last spring. Hmm. 
One moment, we're experiencing technical difficulties with the PowerPoint slides. I'll try and jump ahead from memory. Um, the process of the standard setting was for the panel members to review profiles associated with the student's performance on the high school assessment and look to establish three primary cut scores, a level two cut score, a level three cut score, and a level four cut score. Those cut scores are specific to the accountability aspects of the assessment and were deemed in the same process, determined in the same process used previously in ELA and math and the grades five and eight science administrations from last spring. I'm going to roll forward again. As part of the orientation for the panelist members, their focus was to look at the access point frameworks, which define the uh, learning standards that the students will be assessed against. Uh, the access point frameworks were developed as an extension of our general education instructional standards. Uh, just reducing the breadth, depth, and complexity uh, required of students to demonstrate their knowledge and skills. They also looked at the achievement level descriptors defined for the content area and the um, proposed performance levels as a means of gauging the expectations of students' performance at each of the levels. And then, as I mentioned earlier, uh, reviewed student profiles specific to performance on the assessment uh, uh, in the learning standards selected in the ac access frameworks, uh, the access points that the student, uh, teachers uh, selected for the students. Again, the three cut scores that were the determinations needed from the panelists. Upon conclusion of the standard setting evolution, uh, the agency presented the information and the preliminary report of the standard setting evolution to our national TAC members. Uh, over the course of the long weekend, the national TAC members reviewed the information about the process and the results, and we had a quorum approve the process as satisfactory and consistent with the plan. And Superintendent Dorn has had a recent uh, opportunity to discuss the uh, proposed recommendations that we'll present to the board. Uh, earlier this morning and is uh, will comment on, on those as he sees fit as part of this proposal presentation. So for high school science, uh, the proposed cut scores for WAAIM are as presented. Level 2 is 112, level 3 125, Level four is 159. These again are the cut scores specific to the accountability aspects of the assessment and for reporting uh, performance against the instructional standards in high school science. As a reference, I wanted to provide context to what the cut scores that were set last year with grades five and eight science uh, to show some level of consistency, which was one of the aspects of the standards and panel's efforts, was to review the articulated notion and consistency across grade spans uh, for science. As an impact uh, from those cut scores, we could then derive where the performance levels were for this year's students who were administered the assessment. Uh, the green demarcation, uh, is the line between proficient and not proficient. As you can see, 62% of the students who participated in the high school science assessment were deemed proficient by the cut scores that were selected, and 38% were deemed not proficient. Again, as a reference, this is what this year's grade five and eight students and, and their performance on the science assessment. An additional aspect of the high school science assessment is to look at a proposal for exit exam cut score. Uh, as Linda intimated earlier, we did a equa percentile look at the previous three years of our high school assessment for the population involved and took an average of those three years and determined that about approximately 87% of students had been meeting standard and graduating with uh, the science portion of the assessment. 
to achieve the same level of graduation amongst the population, the agency would propose a one score of 104 uh, that is within the level one sub substrate of the performance levels. And this is also consistent with our math and ELA scores, which were 103 and 104 as a set last year. And that's um, any questions and discussions. I will also cover, there's an extra slide, which is effectively the recommended recommendations we're proposing to the board. So. First question is from MJ. Did you hear me, Parker? First question is from MJ. MJ, you are now unmuted. Thank you. So a question on that last slide you just showed, uh, you talked about level one. So I'm curious because um, how does that, is that just kind of for a point of reference for these other levels when we're looking at the level two, level three um, that we received from you? Um, I'm, I'm just kind of, I, I'm new to the levels and trying to kind of wrap my brain around it. So just the, that last slide, I think there's maybe one after this one um, that you shared the level one cut score and, and how that references and everything else we're talking about. Uh, it was just as a point of reference uh, to reflect on where the 104 score lies as far as the performance levels uh, of the student. Can I have a follow-up question? Yes. This is as well. Go ahead. So that's the point of reference. So what does that mean to us? If you can help maybe explain that. Um, we, if, if you're proposing the CUT score right at the level three, level one is what? So level one is the lowest level of performance for students on this assessment. Uh, the point of reference uh, in your deliberations on whether or not to adopt these recommendations is to, do, is to deliberate on whether the 104 score is appropriate uh, or whether you want to possibly counter-propose a different CUT score or a different So again, just to uh, uh, maybe uh, help draw a distinction, the four of the three cut scores presented two slides previous were about the accountability cut scores, and this one specifically is just for exit exam purposes. MJ, this is Ben. Um, Mike, would you go back to the two the slides? So. You're taking two actions today. One has to do with the requirements for high school graduation. The other has nothing to do with the graduation uh, the requirements for high school graduation. This slide demonstrates the recommendations of OSPI for setting the levels. Um, none, neither of these scores, neither level two, three, or four, none of these these are only established for the purpose of having levels, for having the definition of what those levels are, for the purpose of you know having a state and federal accountability system. So there's nothing on this slide that has anything to do with a cut score as such for high school graduation. Then if you would flip, flip forward there, Michael. This is the slide that says, okay, now that you've established the levels, where on that continuum would be an appropriate uh, minimum threshold score for high school graduation for the students taking the law aim portfolio and, it, and uh, you know based on the practitioner work group the recommendations it ends up being in the level one range a score of 104. Thank you Ben. Next question is from Holly. I think most of my Hi can you hear me? Member Kuhn, you are unmuted. However, we are experiencing feedback from your microphone. If there are any things uh, making noise around you, uh, please minimize them. Now can you hear me? Yes, we yes, can we hear, can you. hear you. Okay, perfect. Thanks again, again, trying to figure out the technology here. So I think my question um, mostly got answered. I, I was thinking that it was the two, the accountability piece and the graduation piece. Um, 
and I had spent a little bit of time just trying to figure out how what aim works and how what aim is scored. Um, and I'm not at all opposed to a cut score 104, but just kind of doing some math here, it looks to me like for a student to meet the graduation cut rate, um, at the lowest, if, they, if their entry points were basic, that they would have to pass six out of 25 items. Is there someone there? Is that, is that what it is? So, Mr. Coon, um, I can't speak to explicitly the uh, the ratios you've come up with. That's probably accurate or in the ballpark. Uh, I think what you had uh, mentioned is to attain a score of 104, the student would have to get about 106 of the. I mean, I'm sorry, six of the 25 points available to them, and that's a. It without actually running the numbers, that's probably very close. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions from members? Oh, I see Peter. I see Peter has a question. Member Mayor, you are now unmuted. So my question is is going back a step to a little higher level, and that is, um, Mike or Ben, perhaps you can um, help me understand where the WA aim relates, if it does, to smarter balance. For example, is a level one under WA aim related? at all to a smarter balance level one um, or are these independent determinations? So uh, I'll approach that, this is Mike, uh, I'll approach that in a couple different ways. Uh, one is uh, their relationship is uh, bound in the aspect of accounting for these students in our state's uh, state and federal system accountability. The level one in Smarter Balanced, uh, or level, or any of the levels in Smarter Balanced, have a design and purpose uh, towards our assessment program, state and federal accountability. The same is true of Wa Ames level one uh, through level four. They are a complement set um, to the accountability system. The Wa Aim is specifically designed for the students uh, who are significantly cognitively challenged and. Um, are focused on a measure of their skills against uh, adapted standards that are lower in breadth, depth, and complexity than our general standards. Does, does that help? I think so. So these things fit together like pieces of a jigsaw, but they're not the same pieces, and the score on one is not the same as the score on the other intentionally. Is that correct? That's correct. They're not the same, they're not the same as trying to equate the, uh, Show coral, um, how should I say this? Their purpose and intentionality are, are for the same purpose, to show the system's accountability for the two populations that are taking the test. The sco scores associated with the two scales are not different, are, are different, and are intentionally derived to be different. Thank you. And Mike, is it also true that the other way in which they relate is that they're both ultimately derived from the same content standard? That is correct. Do we have any other questions? Um, MJ. Parker, MJ has a question. Yeah. Member Bolt, you are now unmuted. So then the probably is a question for you is, are we required as a state board by federal requirements to set exit cut scores or by our state legislation? Or is that something, you know, where is that determinant coming from? Is that coming from federal or state, I guess is my question. Okay, so two parts to the end answer, and I'm going to look to Robin Munson for some affirmation here. So the requirement to establish a minimum score for exit for the diploma is not a federal requirement. The federal government does not require exit exams one way or the other. Some states do it. Some states don't. Uh, we continue to be one that does. So that derives from um, the state statute. Uh, the requirement to have a WA-AIM assessment 
to have levels on the law aim assessment to provide access to the assessment system for this 1% population of special needs kids that have needs that are special enough that they're not necessarily suited for mainstream access to the assessment system. Um, that is a federal requirement. Um, so you're dealing with both federal and state. Now if I'm if, if the question was essentially being asked, do we have to set a minimum threshold score for exit here, my answer to that is yes, we're not in the position as a board of having the debate about whether or not to have exit exams, be it for this population or any other today. Um, the legislature has put us in the role of saying, since we have decided, we being the legislature, since we have decided that there are going to be exit exams, we entrust OSPI to recommend and the state board to provide a public venue for consideration and approval of whatever that minimum score would be. So it's very much like the conversation you had last August when you were debating about, you know, two and a half versus three versus two versus a variety of different, that decision is squarely within your purview as a state board. The decision as to whether or not to have a minimum score is, is in my opinion, not. Thank you. I think Robin wanted to add one thing. No. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, this is Robin Munson. I just want to add that I think in MJ's question as well is the state board's responsibility to set cut scores for all accountability tests. So separate from the exit exam uh, score, which you just addressed, Ben, the state board does have through state uh, authorization responsibility for approving the cut scores on all tests used for federal accountability. And Ben is right that it is a federal, I would say, opportunity for states to offer a test for students with significant cognitive challenges. Um, I don't know of a state that doesn't offer a comparable test, but if we chose to design our assessment system and not have that test, we would just be requiring those students as well to be taking the federal accountability tests that we do have, which would be the Smarter Balance test. We think those are not as appropriate as a test designed specifically for students with significant cognitive challenges. Once we design that, then the State Board, uh, just like they have responsibility for setting our cut scores on the Smarter Balance test, have responsibility for setting the regular cut scores for this test as well. Holly has a question. I was just um, I was actually um, going to respond to Peter's question um, because I spent some time just trying to understand the test itself, and I I know we have to vote for a cut score today, um, and I'm not trying to sabotage that, but as I this is the first time I've ever really to understand what aim and what it's doing um, and it's you know it's complicated um, but I see there an example would be um, so there's three access points um, and one of them would be so the standard is processes within cell um, the highest access point would be students will identify organisms that use sunlight to make food and the lowest access point would be um, students will identify what humans get from photosynthesis and then the teacher designs um, the items for to meet those standards and, the, and gives a pretest and has to make it difficult enough so the student does not pass the pretest. And I think that gets to your question earlier, MJ, as well, um, because they to, they're establishing the threshold at which the student should enter the um, assessment process. And then there's a, a period of, of instruction that's no less than six weeks, and then they give a post-test on the same item. Um, so if, you know, I've talked to a couple of teachers and uh, the teacher at my high school has three students and for the three students he spends somewhere between 25 and 40 hours between designing the pre and post-test and entering um, the data online because he has to score the test himself and enter. 
So for three students to do this, it's, you know, between 30 and 40 hours of unpaid for time that comes out of his planning time. Um, and the items are literally, um, so the, the access point might be students identify what students get from photosynthesis and the item designed at the lowest access point might be three pictures and one of the pictures is of food. So that's the kind of thing that we're talking about. But it, it is based on the standard. Thank you. Do you have any other questions from members? Okay, MJ. Member Bolt, you are now unmuted. Thanks, Parker. So, and I appreciate that, Holly. I think what um, I just wanted to say that um, I, I like that we have the WA aim. I think it's great that students of different abilities have different assessments, and I think it's very appropriate. So I very much appreciate PI having this for our children. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty personally familiar with that as well. Uh, what I am concerned, and, and this would be getting to my question, is that this is one form of assessment, again, that we're giving to our students, and uh, that it, it, it could be the sole determiner on whether or not a student graduates or the ex 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 exam. Um, and that's what I'm, I'm very concerned about. Um, so that would be my question, is, is that truly the case? Are these, you know, are these PET scores, these, ex and I'm talking exit exam, you know, scores that we're determining today, which I, you know, that we have, we have to do, we've been mandated by our state legislator to do, um, are these then singly determinant of a student's future? Um, or are there other considerations taken in? Is, is our system allowed to have other considerations like their grades and their, you know, yearly progress and their IEP performance and all those other things? Uh, are those able to go into also determining? What I am very concerned about, in the, not just with WAIM, but in speaking about WAIM today, is that we are determining a student's future and also driving a whole ed system based on one assessment. So that, that's my question. So uh, this is Mike Middleton. Um, so to your pr primary cons question and concern, uh, the cut score associated with exit exam um, does inherently create a, a situation where there are students in the population who would not achieve that score and thus would not be earning a, a diploma solely on this first iteration or use of the assessment. Uh, to your second part about alternatives, uh, students in the course of their continued matriculation can attempt to take the assessment again and achieve the necessary score. There are other things that we continue to look at as far as alternatives uh, for the students to meet this requirement. Uh, some of the elements that you spoke of specifically wouldn't fit in a, in a category of an assessment, um, but we are attempting to continue to look at avenues for students uh, in this population to have a, a catalog of opportunities much similar, similar in nature to their general uh, education population with their alternatives for fulfilling the graduation requirement. Thank you. Um, okay, Mike, so uh, can we, oh, <laughs> are we good? Can we move on or are we going to say something, Ben? Uh, one, uh, Mike was going to add one more piece about the, the waiver environment for these students is a little different than the general population. Mike, can you explain to me what you, or explain to them what you explain to me? So uh, a subset of this population um, is referred to as awareness waiver or awareness level uh, in performance. They have very little interaction uh, with their um, academic um, abilities. Uh, it's not this way. Um, from a graduation requirement perspective, we have embedded in the system uh, what we refer to as the engagement rubric. If the IEP team determines that the student's cognitive abilities would not uh, 
avail themselves of demonstrating skill with the learning standards uh, in a measurable fashion as designed. Uh, they can select the high school level, the engagement rubric. They can select it at the other levels as well. But specifically the high school, when they select it, um, we automatically waive their graduation requirements uh, rather than continue to ask those, these students to um, continue with the assessment to pass their accountability uh, administration in grade 11. Um, that is obviously a engagement that the IEP team as a whole has to take into account as they determine which assessment to uh, have the, administered to the student and what level of performance, and this is specifically a level of performance they expect of the students and wish to pursue with the student. Holly has a question. Member Coon, you are now unmuted. Thank you. So um, my question is, do students have to fail the, um, the WA-AIM before the IEP team can um, indicate that an awareness waiver is what's appropriate, or can that be indicated before the 10th grade? No, they can actually make that determination as part of the initial administration. Now, if they select the engagement rubric during their accountability administration, from an accountability perspective, they will be counted as a level one performer, but from a graduation perspective, we will automatically waive their engagement and the assessment requirement. Great, thanks. That makes me feel better. I didn't know that. So. Are there further questions? Okay, I don't see any. I think, um, ben, uh, the next step is just to call for a motion. Is that correct? We can move to the next step. If there are no further questions, we can indeed do that. Okay, great. Um, All members are now so, Great. So we'll take these one at a time. The first one. Do I have a motion um, for the super to recommend the cut score on Wa Ames High School Science Test? Kevin, can you do this one? Sure. Uh, this is Kevin Laverty. Uh, I move to adopt the superintendent of recommended threshold scores on the WA-AIM high school science test for use in accountability reporting. Threshold score of 112 between level 1 and level 2. Threshold score of 125 between level 2 and level 3. And threshold score of 159 between level 3 and level 4. Do I have a second? Mona Bailey second. Now that I have a first and a second, is there any discussion? Being none, we'll call for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. The motion carries. Move on now to the second item. The recommended exit exam cut scores for a Watt Ames High School Science Test for the purposes of earning a high school graduation. Do I have a motion? Um, uh, Connie, can you, are you there? Can you do this one? I don't have the details. I can read what's uh, in my screen. State Board approve, I, I move that the State Board approve the Superintendent's recommended exit exam cut score for Wa AIM High School Science Test for purpose of ensuring a high school diploma. A cut do you score want the motion, Mike? Of 104. Do I have a second? Um, Isabel? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Um, Connie read, Connie didn't actually read the business, the motion language, which I'm not sure if it matters a ton, but I think we should go ahead and just read the actual motion language. Could we have a member who has the motion language in front of them read that? I can, I can do it if you want, Isabel. Oh, yeah, that's great, Kevin. Thank you. All right, this is Kevin Laverty. Move to adopt the superintendent of public instruction's recommended exit exam score of 104 for the WA-AIM high school science test for the purpose of earning a high school diploma. Do I have a second? I second the motion. 
Is there any discussion? I've got I've got a question, Isabel. Um, does this need to be a roll call vote? Because uh, I think only if we correct me if I'm wrong, only if that we have it divided. If there are any no's, if there are any no's, then we'd have to do a roll call because we can't tell who, who how many said yes and how many said no. Is that correct, Ben? Yeah, correct. There there is no need for a roll call vote unless somebody calls for a roll call vote. Okay, thank you. I'm not calling for one. Okay. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in for yeah. Aye. 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 <laughs> all opposed say no. Any abstentions? The aye the motion carries. And I think that's it. Thank that's you. Great. Thank you, everyone, for uh, working with the technology with us, and um, we appreciate your time today. And thank you to Robin and Mike for your thorough explanations. Thank you. Thanks you so much, and thanks to the team. I know this was like new technology, but this was great. So thanks, everybody. You can adjourn the meeting. All right. Yeah. So I am adjourning the meeting. All right. Have a see you at the next meeting. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Okay, got, are we good? I can sign out? This is Isabel. Yes. Okay, thanks, Parker, for all your work on this. This oh, was thank great. You so much. And thank you for the patience. Yep. Oh, no problem. And thank you did a great job sending instructions. I felt like I knew what I was doing, so thank you so much. Thanks, Isabel. All right, take care. Bye.